all, you are a woman of the divorced persuasion. <laughs> and I mean, I, uh, well, here I am. Use me. Hi, I'm David Levin, and welcome to another Fresh Leptica episode of Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes TV stories you wouldn't have known from the people who were there. Today, I'm dipping into the archives for my chat with a beloved icon of TVs one day at a time. Pat Harrington Jr. was best known as Schneider, the lovable super, but his career started much earlier as a regular on Jack Parr's Tonight Show and as part of Steve Allen's comedy troupe. In this conversation, which took place about 10 years before he passed away in 2016, Pat was a joker, displaying his trademark sense of humor and improvisation, even as he opened up for our camera. We talked about being discovered by Jonathan Winters in the early 1960s, his famous dad in vaudeville, and what happened when the immigration department thought his Guido Panzini character was truly an undocumented immigrant. Here's the great Pat Harrington Jr. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Don't be in my eye line. <laughs> Damn it! Sit where you want. <laughs> uh... Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Okay, so we're, so... What would you like me to call you today? David's fine. David is sure. good? David? Can we say David? Have a nook for Zachary Boyne, Like my dad. My dad, because I'm going to have you call my folks when we're done. Okay, so... All right, all right. Well, we, we can do this linearly, non-linearly. We'll skip around. We'll just sort of tell stories. But why don't we go sort of just skip right to... Well, I'm Catholic. Perhaps you should do it linearly. All right, we'll do it linearly. <laughs> you were born a poor... <laughs> yes. My folks came into this country during the potato famine in Ireland. That is to say, my father's folks, my mother's family was quite wealthy. They were really very rich. They all came to America during the quiche famine. <laughs> but there weren't a lot of quiches here at that time. Well, that's what made them move. You should have got to France. Yes. It would have had a Are you mic'd? Can we hear you? They can't hear me, but, uh, but uh, we'll find a way to work around that. <laughs> Yeah, the kids. It's about the kids. It's, I, I understand, but they have to hear what the questions are to reference my responses. We find ways to sort of make that work. All right. It's very interesting. Uh, so let's do it. Let's do it the easy way. Tell me about your start in, in showbiz, as it were. Well, yeah, okay, but let's go back. Okay, how back? My, my my dad was a vaudevillian, uh, so a song and dance man, and. Um, uh, I, at a very young age, I mean, I'd get up to, to go to school when, at seven, six or seven years of age, and, and uh, Jimmy Dunn, Pat O'Brien, Bing Crosby would be brought back to the house for a scrambled egg. My mom's cooking scrambled eggs. And uh, so uh, that kind of percolated for a long, long, long time, okay? And I, you know, I was the class cut up, uh, as people who, like me, are. Uh, for whatever whatever deficiencies I was trying to overcome, who knows? Um, and I went to uh, I got a good edu real good education. Uh, the little sisters of the wooden ruler uh, in uh, grade school, uh, the Christian brothers in in uh, high school, and the Jesuits for uh, six years in college. I took two years of graduate work and I worked on a on a uh, on a graduate degree. I didn't actually get it. I had to go into the service. Korea. Um, so uh, really in my heart I wanted to entertain. I wanted to be like my father. I saw my father uh, just take over cafes. When he's working in a joint, I would go in and uh, I'd always have to tell him I was coming in and he'd have a place where I could sit, you know, with a, uh, and he just rack on tour, told stories, sang with this beautiful Irish tenor voice, and it was like, I mean, that was really what I wanted to do. Is that your phone? Is that my phone? No. What? Is it your watch? Oh, yes, it's my watch. Okay. Yeah. That, this is hysterical. I can't hear that. Oh, really? I can't hear that. And it used to be 12 midnight. And I had to change it to 11 o'clock in the day, because I don't know how to really operate the whole watch. Who, care? Who wants to operate a watch? Um, but my wife was going to strangle me if it woke her up any 
one more time, okay, at, at 12 midnight. I couldn't hear it. You know, what are you screaming about? Come on, Sally. The watch! <laughs> so anyway. So your dad. So dad. Was he was he singer? He was uh, a singer. Uh -huh. he, he did a lot of Broadway shows with Merman. He did a lot of musicals. What's his name? Uh, pardon me? What was your dad's name? Pat Harrington. The hell do you think it was? Duh. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, got it. Yeah. No, I can I can understand why you might be confused because I've dropped the junior. Okay. Larry O'Reilly was his name. Okay. <laughs> no, his name was Pat Harrington. He was a very successful uh, Broadway uh, performer. And uh, when I got out of the service, I went to work, you know, of all places, NBC. I was uh, worked in the mailroom, worked myself up to uh, a salesman. I sold today, home and tonight, when it was sold as a package. And uh, but I, I really wanted to, so I, I put together a character, an Italian character called Guido Ponzini, and we used him at sales meetings, and, and he, people really thought that he was that I was Italian, because he was a very articulate, very discerning kind of, uh, and he spoke what ev everybody thought was Italian. Ma can su carna aria lo duscaliti, ma in pensa c'è una duce cotti d'arive. Sono a sono a me e dare l'intrigue e perduto, e perduto. That's all gabbligo, okay? But people in Italy, when I was doing the partial, uh, thought. This guy's from the north. He's from the north of Italy. And the people up in the Piedmontese and the northern say, this guy's Sicilian. This guy's got to be Sicilian. <laughs> so, that, that, so anyway, what happened was, uh, doing that character and uh, really wanting to get, get into entertaining, get, in, get out on the floor, uh, I met Johnny Winters at, uh, at uh, at Tootsies. Not the rocker, the comedian. Johnny Winters, the comedian. And uh, I was introduced to him as Guido Ponzini, the junior officer on the Andrea Doria. So, and then, so I was over there, so he said, oh, I'm over here. So you came to America on the Andrea Doria. And I said, almost. <laughs> You got hit off Ambrose Point and it sank, you know, 10 miles outside of the, the limit. So I was almost there, you know, <clears throat> but we were all saved by the Ile de France. They were beautiful. They come up, they pick up all, and you know, at a buck ahead, they did a hell of a job. <laughs> so, um, that, so there I am, and he says to me, Look, at, you've got to come on. The, I'm taking over for par for three weeks. You've got to come on the show with me. Uh, I said, okay. So I went on two, the following Tuesday. This is like a Friday. Did he know at that point that you weren't really? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we were talking, you know, like, uh, where are you from? What are you doing? I, you know, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, just, he was, he, but he was, just, he just thought it was the best sound he'd ever heard, you know, and he's a sound kind of guy. So, uh, so I did three shows with him in the two weeks that he took over. When Parr came back, um, uh, we had this big meeting. He, he Parr said, what's been going on? I said, well, this one guy's getting some laughs. So we had this big meeting, and, uh, and uh, uh, there was about nine people in it. And everybody was looking at Parr, you know? How is he going to respond? So he asked me something, and I answer, I forget the question he asked me, but I was in, in a, I was in, I was a Guido, I was being that my Guido, and uh, I, I responded to this question, and Par went like this, and everybody was going, and then his shoulders started to shake, and over the next. Two and a half years, I did 57 shows with Parr. Uh, it, 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 that was my introduction, right? I mean, <laughs> this is the hottest show on television. This guy's on nine national magazine covers in the last five months, and I'm on his show once a week, four times, five times a month, six times a month, right? I became one of the, he had a, he had a coterie of, uh, 
of people that he that he really liked. Uh, Genevieve, uh, Cliff Arquette, uh, Alan, uh, what, no, what was he? Alexander King, uh, and, and Guido, and w there were one or two others. Dodie Goodman. Did I say Dodie Goodman? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. God, I'm glad I remember that. So yeah, so I was on the show all the time. It. It was so success, successful that about four or five months after I made my debut on the show, the producer, Billy Anderson, got a call from the immigration people. They said, we don't have a date of entry, we don't have a, a, a date of entry or a port of entry, and we want to find out how this man came. The guy said he's an actor. Don't get flip. They were really teed up. So he explained it. Right? So uh, the Knights of Columbus wanted me to be their man of the year, you know. I said, I'm Irish. Phone. Click. You know. So. Uh... That's all we've got time for for now. Join me next time when we'll be talking about what happened when Pat Harrington was brought to do the Steve Allen Show. If you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified when it's ready. Meantime, let me know your favorite One Day at a Time episode in the comments below. I'm David Levin. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, don't miss a single episode of Pop Goes the Culture, The Boomer Tube, or Ask Them Yourself. Subscribe and top the bell icon so you never miss an episode. <laughs>